I didn't always want to be a stop motion animator. I thought I was going to be a live action filmmaker. You just get bitten by some kind of bug and, and once you've decided that that's what you want to do, you just kind of head off in that direction. A stop motion animator, especially in regards to film, is kind of like a translator. Our job is to embody the characters with life to tell the story that we've been brought here to do. I'm currently working on Kubo and the Two Strings. I've been shooting for 14 months now and we've got about another four or five months left. These are the big boards, these have got the schedule for the film from where we are today right up until the end. So we'll come through and we'll talk with Jared about what our path is for the, for the following week. So we've got six days in there for 250 frames. So that's 43 frames a day for yeah. little Hanzo. Yeah, that, that feels okay? good. Yeah. The thing that's, that's easy to forget is that it's not just Dan, it's Dan plus 30 other animators out there. So this is really, this is like a giant puzzle that if one piece moves, it trickles down. It's like the whole orchestration of the film is yeah. here and Jared's conducting. <laughs> so the the start of the process kind of, it begins with it an edit session him. for me, in which I'll sit down with the editor and the director and we'll go through the specifics of the shot that I'll be working on. So he comes from the shroud of the uh, forest into the sunlight here in the cemetery. And so I think you just want him to have this nice natural gait, maybe, you know, 14, 16 frames a step. And then as he lifts his head up and he sees the crowd and what they're doing, I think you'd want just a little bit of a faltering in the way he's walking. We try and keep animators working on a sequence so that we kind of own the flow of it, so we know what's happening with the characters, where it sits in the story, and how it all kind of relates to the bigger picture. Part of the process after we've been given the direction is, as an animator, you kind of, it's nice to have some reference. We'll come out and we'll film uh, us performing a piece of acting or a physical action just so we have some kind of visual reference so we can kind of work out when we go into a shot exactly how we're going to approach it. It's about just seeing what kind of, what things we can gather. And even on the most simple shots, you can get something in there that just kind of bolsters the shot up. It kind of gives it a little bit of nuance and a bit of extra detail. And so once I've kind of got that information, then I will go to puppets and we'll determine if rigging's required, what kind of costume changes, adaptations will be needed. He needs his shamsen on the back. Okay. So we need to open up this back rigging point. I'm going to need some super subtle eye movement on this one and it, I'm finding the top lid is sticking a little too much and I'm not getting that nice twist there. For example, to help him walk down the stairs, every now and then he'll need help supporting his weight, so he'll need a rigging just okay. to help him along. He's going to need a bum rig. Okay. Um, and he's walking on fairly flat ground, so uh, X, Y, and Z winder and maybe a track. So just getting it to a place where I can start the process. His arms too loose. Okay. We've been working together for many years, so you do kind of get uh, used to the animators and how different animators like the puppet to be tension. Okay, give that a feel real quick before I put it in there. So once the the, the rigging and yep. the costume and everything is kind of ready, then I will take the puppet with the rigger and we'll, we'll get him settled into frame, um, working with camera, working on positions, making sure it fits with the animatic and the shot's going to look as it's supposed to. Holly to Nikki. Hey Holly. Nikki, we're ready for finals on Yellow 5. Once we've kind of finalised the shot, then we get all the teams together to kind of make everything look absolutely the best that it can be because the final shot is essentially a performance and once we start doing it then we're usually in the zone until the end of the shot. That's the moment just before you launch that you, you get to change anything and prettify everything. And then the curtains close <laughs> and you're kind of left on your own. That's the time to just kind of shut everything off and and get on with it. 
which is the best part. Showing there's like an internal process happening within this kind of bit of plastic. There's, there's something in there that makes you stop and think. There's a person here thinking and feeling. If you're walking, you, you know, the feet have to be in the right place, the hips have to be in the right place, the torso has to be twisting in the right way, otherwise it doesn't look right. You know, we all know what somebody who's walking looks like, you know if it's wrong. This is um, an egg sheet or a dope sheet, and it's basically showing on the left side the frame number, so we can work out exactly what's going to happen in our shot. If a character's walking, we can mark exactly when the steps are supposed to happen, but more importantly, it's used for dialogue. So the facial animation will be worked out beforehand, um, 3D printed, and this will tell us exactly where we're supposed to change the face shape. You take that image, which puts it next to the first one, so slowly building up a shot. It's hugely technical in terms of figuring out what you're going to do and working with all the departments. But for me, I think a good animator is somebody who just hits the emotion of what you're doing properly. That's the most important thing in terms of telling a story. All right, so what we got here? It's basically, it's bringing them to life. It's showing characters being alive and showing a connection or a thought process as well. It's perfect, it's exactly what I wanted. From when I first started animating, people have always said that my work has an emotive quality to it, so people respond to it. They actually feel like they understand what the character's going through. And so being given the opportunity to do that is the most satisfying thing 